Police districts, field houses, and possibly a vacant high school. Finding shelter for the surge of migrants is a huge challenge that is about to get worse next week. While time is running out for the Lightfoot administration, the new surge will arrive just in time for mayor-elect Brandon Johnson's inauguration. We caught up with him in West Rogers Park at two events on his public schedule. Johnson refused to answer questions about the migrants. Earlier this week, Mayor Lightfoot pleaded with Texas Governor Greg Abbott to stop sending migrants to Chicago. And while she said the city has no more room, sources say there has been frustration on the state level with a lack of plan from the Lightfoot administration. And Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle says it costs Cook County Health $1.8 million a month to care for migrants medical needs. But she says addressing their needs shouldn't just fall on Chicago and Cook County. Preckwinkle says the migrant surge is challenging on all levels of government, but it will no doubt be one of Brandon Johnson's biggest challenges from day one. And so far, we've heard very little about his plan. Guys, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I love you get what you vote for stories, okay? Because a lot of these liberals are seeing the consequences of the things that they vote for and how the Democrat Party has sold them a crock of bullshit, right? When it comes to their policies that Democrats openly advocate for. And these people go out here and vote for Democrats because we're fighting against the white man in bigotry and hate, right? And these liberals, these people who vote Democrat religiously, are suffering the consequences of Democrat policies and then they want to boo-hoo, whine, and complain about it. And all I can say is, I told you so. I told you so. And in this edition of You Get What You Vote For, we got to go out to Chicago, okay, who, uh, you know, just voted for more crime, right, by electing a progressive mayor, Brandon Johnson, who hasn't taken office yet, I don't believe. But yeah, they, they voted for more crime. And as a result, again, you have thugs and criminals that have taken over the city. Okay, they become emboldened. And Chicago also is dealing with the illegal immigration crisis because you guessed it, uh, mayors like Lloyd Lightfoot and Democrats said that, hey, we're a sanctuary city. We love illegal immigrants, right? They're welcome here, okay? And if you don't accept illegal immigrants, then you're a bigot. So Texas Governor Greg Abbott decided, all right, cool. I'm going to send illegal immigrants your way, right? Since you're a sanctuary city, since you love the illegals, we're going to send them your way. Now that Chicago is experiencing the negative consequences of the immigration crisis, which again is caused by the Biden administration and their soft on border policies and the fact that they basically encouraged uh, illegals to come here to this country. Um, now the citizens, the residents of the city are revolting against city officials who are trying to house illegals in their neighborhood. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I got to tell you guys, this is glorious. Take a look. Cheryl, tonight the city of Chicago has not said if their plans to open what they call a respite center in the former shuttered Hi Sh South Shore High School have been finalized. But people who live in that neighborhood made it very clear how they feel. For city leaders who came looking for a conversation over opening the doors of a shuttered South Shore High School to migrants. What's important is that we really establish that this is a humanitarian crisis and we're here. South Shore residents responded with resounding rejection. While this crisis may constitute an emergency for the city of Chicago, it does not constitute an emergency for the South Shore community. Incoming migrants have overwhelmed district police stations by the hundreds. It's my turn. It's my turn. Hello. But city leaders could barely eke out a word of the details about a proposed respite center at the former South Shore High School. When it comes to the total number of people at South Shore at any given point in time, it is fluid. We'd start with 250, 500. How could you do that without consulting us? I am concerned with safety in the area. The Chicago Police Department will put 24-7, 24-7 officers at that location. Those are exactly the kind of services Southside residents say they begged for 
and been denied. Every homeless immigrant that you bring in, that you scoop up one of the homeless individuals in our community, I think that would be fair. Tonight, we also learned that a field house in the city's North Suburban or North Avondale neighborhood will also close to the public temporarily because they plan to turn that into a respite center as well. Now, this surge of migrants into the city of Chicago comes on the heels of Brandon Johnson administration handover. And today we caught up with him at two separate events. He refused to answer questions about the migrants. I can't help but to do nothing but laugh, okay? The reason why is because a majority of those people, what was their skin color? They were black. What was the sex of a lot of those people? Women. Who overwhelmingly votes for Democrats and progressives? Black women. Who overwhelmingly votes Democrat? Black people. So we know they voted for it at the national level with Biden and Kamala, okay, soft on border policies, which is why this is happening. But then let's look at who they, they, they voted for at, at, at the local level. They voted for Brandon Johnson, okay, a guy who basically doubled down on Chicago being a sanctuary city. Okay, this is what he said. This is what he tweeted out, March 10th. Chicago must lead with and live by the promise to be a sanctuary city. Long time Chicagoans don't have to lose for new arrivals to gain. There's enough space at the table for all of us to eat and sit. Immigrants are welcome. Well, apparently not. Because what these people are upset about is that they're opening up a high school. They're repurposing a high school that for years they tried to get open. They tried to repurpose the actual community, tried to repurpose that high school for community needs. And city officials refused to do it. But now they want to do it for illegals, and that's why a lot of them are pissed off. But then they turn around and voted for this clown who is pro-illegal illegal immigration. He's pro-illegal to the point where he actually thinks that illegals should be able to vote, including in your school board elections. Take a look. You know, our democracy, for better or worse, um, you know, was designed to provide like enfranchisement to individuals, of course, who have, um, you know, the, the legal presentation of being here. Um, I think that should be maintained. You know, now as far as, you know, undocumented families having some say so in the direction of our public schools, I think that's worth figuring out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're dropping your kids off. You know, I don't believe that families, you know, should be shut out of the ability to have influence, you know, and it's why we fought for democracy, right? <laughs> Again, this is so hilarious to me, okay? Because this is a prime example. What you're seeing, guys, is how the Democrats will sell black people. They will sell Negroes a pile of bullshit as if it is gold, okay? And these people will buy into it. And then they want to get mad and upset when it turns out that, again, they, they were sold a pile of bullshit for the Democrats. Listen to the man's rhetoric. Democracy, our democracy, democracy, democracy. Voting rights, voting rights. They told black folks, hey, vote for us because the white man, <laughs> the white conservative man, he's trying to take away your right to vote, even though... Uh, Nobody's taking away anybody's right to vote, right? Uh, you know, Republicans believe that black folks are actually smart enough to get IDs and vote, right? But apparently, again, that's an attack on voting rights, right? But what do they actually mean when they mean democracy and voting rights? He's telling you what he meant. What he meant is giving illegals the right to vote in your school board elections. When they talk about democracy, what is he actually talking about? Fighting for illegals to participate in your democracy. Right. When they talk about diversity and inclusion, what do they mean? They mean the right for illegals to move into your neighborhood. OK. And then they said. Illegals, they don't take up resources. They, they're not a strain on a social safety net. They don't commit crimes. If you say that you're a bigot, 
you're racist. <laughs> right? This is what they said. <laughs> this is what they said. They told conservatives, shut the hell up. You guys are bigots for complaining about illegals. That's what they said when the legals were in the sanctuary cities. Right? That, that's what the Democrats, they brainwash these people into believing that no illegal immigration is good. It's nothing but a net positive. All the conservative talking points about how illegal immigration is a net negative. Oh, no, it's, 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 it's BS. It's BS. No, we need open borders. Again, that worked when all the illegals were in Texas and Arizona in the red states. But as soon as these liberal cities actually start to get the illegals because the red states got smart and said, you know what? Since Democrats won't open borders, since Joe Biden invited the illegals to come, okay, let's send them to all the sanctuary cities, all the places where allegedly they're welcome. And then lo and behold, in every single last one of these cities where migrants are being bussed there, okay, and we're talking about a few thousand, we're not even talking about the hundreds of thousands, the millions that are flooding the border that are going into Texas, right? These border towns, right? We're not even talking about what these border towns have to deal with. The few thousand migrants are absolutely destroying these liberal cities. I mean, these people are losing their minds. It's the worst thing ever. And the people that are seeing the consequences of illegal immigration and having illegals in your neighborhood, right down your street. You got to feed them. You got to clothe them. They need to be employed. Some of them are criminals. Oh, all of a sudden now, now you see the consequences of what you vote for. But again, is it actually going to change the way you vote? I highly doubt it. Again, that's the worst part about this because I always say the best way to red pill these people is to give them what they want. But honestly, I, I'm not sure some of these people, and this has nothing to do with race before people start to think I'm saying something I'm not really saying. I'm not sure because this, I mean, it applies to the white liberals too out in Portland, <laughs> right? Oregon, okay, in San Francisco, some of these other places. I'm not sure some of these people are even smart enough to realize that this is a consequence of what you voted for. You voted for this because they told you exactly what they're for, but they framed it as, well, if you disagree with us, you're racist. If you disagree with us, then you're a bigot. Diversity and inclusion. Congrats. You got exactly what you asked for. Diversity and inclusion. And then you want to boohoo whine and complain about it. But again, you voted for it. You voted for Brandon Johnson who told you, hey, I think illegals should be able to vote in your, your elections, in our elections. Brandon Johnson told you, hey, I want to defund the police. I'm soft on crime. Biden, calm, they all told you. But all they had to do, this is how, I'm telling you, this is how sad and pathetic the voting habits are of black folks. All you got to do, you can say the worst thing, or you can advocate for the worst policies ever for black folks. You can literally advocate for the destruction of the black community. All you got to do is say, well, Republicans are racist. <laughs> right? That's all you got to say. And these Negroes fall in line and vote for their own destruction. It's a shame. It's embarrassing. But again, I can't do nothing but laugh because, again, you see it time and time and time and time again. But they're going to turn around in the next election and they're going to vote for another lunatic. Right? They're going to vote for another lunatic. So, I mean, hey, I'm at the point now where I'm like, well, shoot. Republicans might need to try harder to take away voting rights. That might be the best thing for black folks. Because clearly, uh, some people don't know how to vote in their own best interest. And I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you how to vote. You're saying that because you're complaining about what you voted for. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Maybe some of these alleged uh, voting restrictions, maybe they're good. right? Maybe they're actually a good thing. I don't know. That's what it sounds like based off what I'm hearing, based off what I'm seeing. So, again, I can't really feel bad because, again, you voted for this, not just at the local level, but also at the national level as well, too. When you went and you voted Biden Kamala, you voted for this. When you voted for Brandon Johnson, you voted for this. When you voted those progressives on the city council that basically told you, oh, no, no, we're going to make this decision. We're not going to get your input on it. And we're going to tell you after the fact that we made a decision, that we made a decision and we're sticking with it. And you just got to deal with it.
But he's the same people. But but democracy wasn't very democratic to me to decide to house illegals and to use up community resources for them without actually getting input from the community. Doesn't sound very democratic to me. That's because the democracy nonsense is a talking point. Democrats don't believe in democracy. <laughs> they don't believe in, 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 in people actually deciding what they want. It's all about them accumulating power. The more Democrat voters, the better. And they can advocate for the most destructive policies to keep y'all dependent on voting for them. And you're going to line up and vote for it in droves because... Republicans are racist, right? Republicans are racist. The white man, particularly the conservative white man, he's your worst enemy, okay? Again, it's amazing. The Democrat Party has thoroughly brainwashed people, man, and all I can do is laugh at this point. I'm laughing at you people, right? I I'm laughing at you people, um, and, and, you know, it, it is what it is. There's not that much I can say anymore, except I told you so. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.